I will be starting a new chapter. Chapter number six. You take out page number fifty-seven. Means page number will not be given. You will see page number fifty-six is there, and that the next page is uh, will probably the be page number fifty-seven. And there you will get the chapter. Chapter number six. Lolly road. So let's begin the story. Here, see, India had received recently achieved its independence from the British, and the new government started to rename the roads and buildings after Indian personalities. Read the story to explore more. So, from here we can know that the roads and buildings in India were named after the Britishers. Yes, they have built and they named accordingly according to their names. So now, after independence, Indian roads and buildings were changing okay the government started to rename the roads means give a second name according to the indian personalities so here let us read to know more about this for years people were not aware of aware of the existence of a municipality in malguri the municipality kept kept itself in the back background and remained so till the country got its independence but Lo and behold, on fifteenth August nineteen forty-seven, they swept the streets, cleaned the drains, and hoisted flags all over the place. So for many years, people were not aware of the existence. Means people did not know that there was a municipality in Malguri. People were not aware. Means people did not know that there was a municipality in Malguri. The municipality kept always kept itself in the background. But means um, always kept itself in the background and continued keeping so until independence. Means on the day when India got independence, and on fifteenth August nineteen forty seven, they swept the streets. Means they cleaned the streets, they cleaned the drains, hoisted flags all over the place and all. But the municipal chairman said, "I feel we have not done enough." the chairman of the municipality he began saying that we know that there is a chairman in all the municipalities so here the chairman of this <coughs> sorry municipality began saying that i believe that we have not done enough that according to him he felt the chairman felt that he had not done enough i used to visit him almost every day trying to make a living out of news reports to a paper which paid me 2 rupees for every inch of published news so the narrator here the narrator used to visit the municipal chairman almost every day trying to make a living out of the news reports to a paper means uh, trying to make a living out means trying to earn a living by charging 2, two rupees for each inch of means for each news published he charged 2 rupees and for uh, with that he tried to earn a living from the chairman and thus he visited him almost every day and half of what i asked so the narrator was present there at that time when the municipal chairman said that i have mm, i feel we have not done enough so the narrator asked and half of what nothing to mark off the great event he said brooding and then announced come what may i am going to do something great he <clears throat> so the man was saying that um nothing to mark the event great event nothing <coughs> the chairman said that i've not done enough to mark the great event he said brooding and then announced he said thinking about something and then suddenly announced that come i'm going to do something great he called up an extraordinary meeting of the council and harangued them and at once they decided to nationalize the names of all the streets and parks in honor of the birth of independence so the chairman he thought for a while and then announced that of mm, told everyone to come on and they gather for a meeting all of them gathered for an extraordinary meeting of the council and there he gave a loud speech 
on what on the thing that they decided to nationalize the names of the streets and the parks in honor of the birth of independence means they started to nationalize the names of the means change the names of the streets and parks according to the indian personalities at the corner of the lovely extension and market there used to be a statue people had got to so used to it that they never bothered to ask who it was or even to look up it was generally used by the birds as a perch so at the corner of lawley extension and market there was a statue people was means people became so used to um, that they never bothered means they never thought that who statue is that why is it here what did he do what happened nothing they bothered about they were so used to with this statue it was generally used by the birds as a perch see people did not bother but birds they used means they used to come and rest here so the chairman suddenly remembered that it was the statue of frederick lolly so now we got to know whose statue was it it was the statue of frederick lolly the extension has been named after him now it was changed to gandhi nagar and it seemed impossible to keep lolly statue there any longer the council unanimously resolved to remove it so suddenly the chairman remembered that it was the statue of sir frederick lolly so the extension was also named after him lolly road now it was changed to gandhi nagar and now as it was changed to gandhi nagar the statue couldn't be kept here any longer it was impossible to keep the statue so the council announced with complete agreement that to remo- remove the statue the next morning the council with the chairman surrounded the statue triumphantly now they realized they now realized their mistake the statue towered 20 feet above them and seemed to rise from a pedestal of molten red lead it stood with the firmness of a mountain but it made them only firmer in their resolve if it was going to mean blasting up that part for the of the town for the purpose they would do it for they unearthed a lot of history about Fr- sir frederick lolly he was a combination of attila the scourge of europe and nadir shah with the craftiness of machiavelli so the next morning the council and the chairman surrounded the statue and then they realized their mistake that statue was 20 f- means fit and the statue stood very firm see you can see the in the picture statue stood very firm and seeing the statue firmness of the statue the decision was also have firm to remove the statue people dropped their normal occupations and loitered around the statue wondering how they could have tolerated it for so many years now people they left their work and began this uh, wondering around the statues uh, statue now they were thinking that how they could tolerate this statue for so many years the gentleman seemed to smile mockingly at them now with his arms locked behind and his sword dangling from his belt now when they notice so carefully the to means at the statue they saw that the gentleman was looking mockingly at them means in a way of making fun okay with his arms locked behind and his sword hanging from his belt there could be no doubt that he must have been the worst tyrant imaginable the true picture with breeches and wig and white waistcoat at that hand and that hard determined look of all that has been hatefully familiar in the british period of indian history the shuddered they shuddered when they thought of the fate of their ancestors who had to bear that trena tyrannies of this man means now the people began to notice him seeing his form and uh, this look the people began to think that he was a means very strict ruler and uh, they began to think how their ancestors could have means how their ancestors bear uh, at that time they bore him next the municipality called for tenders a dozen contractors sent in their estimates 
the lowest standing at 50000 rupees for removing the statue and cutting it to the municipal office where they were already worried about the housing of it next the municipality now called for tenders for removing the statue and dozens of contractors sent their estimates okay the lowest one was 50000 for removing the statue and taking it to the municipal office the chairman thought it over and told me why don't you take it yourself i will give you the statue free if you do not charge us anything for removing it now the chairman he looked at the narrator and said why don't you do this if you um, remove the statue for free i will give you the statue i had thought till then that only my municipal friends were mad but now i found i could be just as mad as they i began to calculate the whole affair as pure investment first he thought that the narrator thought that only his municipal friends have gone mad but when he began to calculate everything and see he saw that he was also going mad he began to calculate and he thought that no this was a pure investment suppose means investment how suppose the removal cost him 5000 rupees and I sold it for met the metal for 6,000. About 3 tons of metal might fetch anything or could probably sell it to the British Museum or Westminster, Westminster Abbey. I saw myself throwing up the country paper job. <clears throat> he was thinking that suppose if I um, remove the statue and it cost me five. Uh, this one. 5000 rupees then i can sell it with 6000 and he began to calculate his profit and all the council had no difficulty in passing a resolution permitting me to the to take the statue away i made elaborate arrangements for the task so the council gave him the permission for dis uh, dismounting the for to remove the statue and take it away so he began making the arrangements i borrowed money from my father-in-law promising him a fa fantastic rate of interest i recruited a team of 50 coolies to ha hack the pedestal he borrowed now he make uh, made arrangements for everything he borrowed f uh, this money from his father-in-law promising him to give a fantastic rate of uh, interest okay I recruited him, then he recruited 50 coolies. I stood over them like a slave driver and kept shouting instructions. They were working and he gave instructions to them. They put down their implements at 6 in the uh, evening and returned to their attack early next day. So all the things which they require, would require, they keep, kept it at 6 in the evening and early the next day morning they began their attack. Means they came back came to the work place we hacked for 10 days this worked for 10 days no doubt we succeeded in chipping the pedestal here and there but that was all the statue showed no sign of moving at this rate i feared i must be become i might become bankrupt for a, in a fortnight i received permission from the district magistrate to acquire a few sticks of dynamite cordoned off the area and lighted the fuse i bought down the night from his pedestal without injuring any limb means he now they walked and walked but he, they could just move the statue here and there and that was all they could not means they could just um, this they were not able to move the statue the only thing they could do was that the ch in the chipping of pedestal here and there a bit but other than that nothing they could do so he a require uh, means he uh, received permission from the district magistrate to bring a few sticks of dynamite which he fused on that in a blast the um, this pedestal would remove so he could do this without injuring any limb transporting was a nightmare now transporting it to the um, to his house was a nightmare for him it take it took me three days to reach the house without with my booty it took the narrator three days to reach his house along with all the essential things. It was stretched out on a specially designed carriage drawn by several bullocks. It was laid on a specially designed carriage which was pulled by several bullocks. The confusion brought about my passage by my passage as the confusion brought about by my passage along Market Road. The 
incessant shouting and instructions I had to be giving. The blinding heat of the day, Sir F's carriage coming to a halt at every inconvenient spot and angle, moving neither forwards nor backwards. All this was a nightmare I would wish to pass over. Means all the moving his statue was first impossible thing and then taking him, transporting the statue to his house was the second nightmare. Means it was so impossible, such a big statue, it stretched in a special carriage pulled which was pulled by many bullocks. And giving them instructions and pulling and pushing, it took him several days. I mounted guard over him on the roadside at night. As he lay on his back staring at the stars, I felt sorry for him. So, I mounted guard over him on the roadside at night. Half was stretched over the roadside and as he lay on his back, means he was laying down and his back touched the ground and he was looking as seemed as if looking at the stars the narrator felt sorry at this sight in due course he was safely lodged into my small house his head and shoulders were in my front hall and the rest of him stretched out into the street through the doorway understood so he lay in his small house his head and shoulders were in my front hall means in one room the statue couldn't be adjusted so and the rest of him stretched out in the street through the doorway. Through the doorway, the rest body part was stretched out in the street. The municipal council passed a resolution thanking me for my services. The municipal now passed a resolution thanking the narrator for his services. I wired the news about the statue to my paper. Means he was... Yes, um, so he in his paper, he printed that news. And he published that news. A week later, the chairman came to my house in a state of agitation. After this, after publishing this news, uh, means one week later, the um, this chairman came to his house. He seated himself on the chest of the tyrant. He said, I have a bad news for you. I wish you had not sent up that news item about the statue. The chairman began to say that I have a bad news for you. I wish... To whom he said, he said to the narrator, he said that, I have a bad news for you. I wish you would not have uh, sent the news to the um, people, means you have not published the news. See this, he held out a sheaf of telegrams. They were from every kind of historical society in India, all protesting against the removal of the st statue. Then he showed him, he said, see this, there was a... many There were many telegrams from various historical society of India, Protesting against the removal of the statue. We had all been misled about Sir F. This Frederick Lawley was a military governor who had settled down here after the mutiny. They were all misled about the man. He was actually a military governor who settled down here after the mutiny. He almost built the town of Malgori. He established here the first cooperative society for the whole of India and the first canal system by which thousands of acres of land were relocated from the Sarayu. He established this, he established that and he died in the great Sarayu floods while attempting to save the lives of the villagers living on its banks. Means he did this, he did that, he did many things for India. He um, and at last he died in the great Sarayu floods while saving the lives of the villagers on the banks of the river. Okay. In one of his dispatches, he was said to have declared Britain must quit India someday for her own good. In one of the dispatches, he began to say that Britain must one day quit India for his own, for her own good. The chairman said the, governor, the government has ordered us to reinstate the statue. Now the chairman was also in fear of losing his job. He said that then he said that the government has now ordered us to reinstate, means to put the statue in its own place again, means to reinstate the statue again, to again build the statue. The govern the government has now instructed them. So, see without knowing anything, they just remove the statue of such a great man so it was their mistake and now they were the chairman was in the fear of losing fear of losing his job so this is a story of the lolly road 
you go through the story and all the difficult words you read and the word meanings also you try to learn so this is some story written by rk narayan means the narrator is rk narayan